Hello everyone, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. We're going to talk about hot press paper, patterns, layering, you know, and brush strokes, and creating a color palette to create coordinate prints, designs, etc, etc. So I go over this step by step by using one brush. I show you the color palette that I created and how I created it and, you know, show you how I can create patterns and the coordinates to go with them. Really simple but fun and exploring how to use watercolor in different ways. Um, it's just some things that I do myself to create some fun designs. If you have any questions about this, please leave in the comment section. Let me know if you'd like to create patterns and some toodles. I think they're just fun. They, they get you out of your comfort zone. They help you think about color and placement and all that stuff. Also, uh, check out my Patreon. I have ad-free videos, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. So what's up? So let's get started on some patterns. Okay, so let's go over supplies for this tutorial. Um, I have a piece of Arch 100% cotton hot press paper today. Yes, we're going to do hot press again. And it's good to play with both, ki both kinds of paper so you can see the difference and you might see if you like one towards the other and it's kind of fun to play with both. we are using my Princeton 8 long round just this brush only because it has a great belly and a great tip. And so I've already started doing a, I created a palette here. So what I've gotten here is like I made like a mustardy kind of yellow. Then I just used burnt sienna and watered it down. Then I used um, burnt umber with some Payne's gray mixed together with water with more water it becomes lighter you know the the value of becomes lighter so the hue is like this color and the, the more water you use the lighter it gets so that's those two colors together this is just Payne's gray light and darker and then the screen that I mixed up which is basically yellow and peacock blue with a little of the burnt umber so it's kind of like an olive green a little bit brighter than that but in that tone so these are the colors I'm going to work with so it's always good to try and put out a color palette sometimes to see if the colors work well together before you paint, right? And you can just see them just by looking at them right here on the paper. See that? I like it. It's mostly warm with a couple of cools, right? The gray is neutral, so it can go either way. You can put gray with hot and cold, um, and the cool tone is the green. So you could have just had all neutrals without the green. I'm sorry, warm tones, neutrals without the green. But then boom, your eye pops. So you just add it like a little extra, right? This different way. Or you can take out the yellow too and you have really nice muted warm neutrals, right? Same thing, take out the gray, which isn't, this gray is kind of on the blue. So it's kind of a little, it's in between the blue, the cool tones and the warm tones. And these are all just plain neutrals in the warm family, right? So these are things you can play with when you're talking about color palettes and whatnot. And then strokes, right? So then I'll just use a like a scrap here. So we've got the color palette. Then you're going to play next with strokes. So you take all the colors that you have here. And this is why I love this brush. Pushing down, pulling back up, pushing down, pulling back up. Get used to doing that, right? Get used to playing with strokes. And this paper is different. It sits, the paint sits on top of the paper on hot press because, you know, it's, it's pressed out all the divots of all the, the nooks and crannies that you see in cold press. There's good points to this and bad points to this. What's good about that is that the color it really sits on top and it's kind of vibrant, vibrant, but it takes longer to kind of soak in the paper, right? It's a little more forgiving that way, but you can get more hard edges. See the little one kind of developing in here, whereas the cold press will just kind of blend nicely. Also, the cold press requires more paint because it soaks up more paint. So there's a big difference. Let me just go add some more of this color here, some water. So that with this brush, you hold it on an angle this way, and then the pressure, pushing down and lifting up. It's all about pressure. And then these are things to practice before you start playing around. But we're going to be doing like a, a neutral kind of fun, practicing brush strokes, color, and this paper doodle. The combination of all three. <laughs> 
So if you just did like a, a simple leaf like this, see how it just puddles right there? You just take that puddle and move it around. I tap my paintbrush on my paper towel. I didn't mention that paper towel. And see, so you move it around until you have one even wash on this paper and then just pull that and then you have a nice even wash. So you can create nice even washes on this paper just like you can on cold press. It's just a little more maneuvering, but you'll see that the intensity is much brighter, right, with the color. This paper is great if you want to do some serious botanicals because botanicals require just layering and glazing on top of each other, on top of each other, on top of each other. So let me put that on top of that. It's just a, you're, you're painting more in a slow movement, but you can paint fast in this paper too. I do it all the time. So you're getting used to the brush doing all these different things. And then sometimes just play with the brush, holding it on the tip like this, just doing some delicate strokes. Get used to used to using the tip. You can do the push down, pull up method, but then just get used to using the tip to make some nice fine points. You can use it going sideways to get a really bigger wash. A lot of versatility in this brush. That's why I love it so much. I love it so much because I like to fill in an area, but I also like the points. Do nice little branches and whatnot. See? <laughs> so, let's play with this palette and creating some fun doodles with it. Now you could do um, some branches, whatever, but I thought we'd do something graphic, right? Graphic, simple shapes, things like that. So you can do a diamond shape, right? And you can keep create any color you want for this outer, outer part of it. See, it's kind of still beading here and I'll grab my paper towel and I'll tap it. Or you can take that same paint and kind of lift it back on your brush See, push, curve up, curve down, so like a triangle, but then we're going to go here and here. We've got a diamond. Now it's not going to be perfect by any means, and it doesn't have to be curved like this. But this is where you take your little diamond shape and then make it a little more interesting. Now see, as I'm using the paint as I go across, um, it's getting a little bit lighter because I've used some of the paint already from that little bead of, and that one's not. You can go and do another layer of color. I kind of like hot press because it does have those hard edges sometimes and it's kind of, I don't know, it's more of an expression of painting. It's not perfect and that's what I like about it. It, it creates imperfect little blooms. So you just go across right with this one color and then you're gonna have to repeat it on top just like so so the curve Ooh. getting used to almost like drawing with your pen paintbrush instead of with a pen <laughs> excuse me a pen And you can go right back over those lines too if you feel like they're too skinny, you want them thicker. See, I'm going back over some of these. You want the color more intense. This is how you create some fun patterns. You could paint like a nice, serious looking bird, but then in the background, start to think about do you want just an ordinary background? Or do you want something really unique and different? You don't have to have everything, if it's a painted a realistic bird, have your background like a realism of the trees or wherever it's in. Juxtapose it. Juxtapose it. It makes it completely different. Put the bird with this whole cool pattern behind it. This is the things that I think about when I'm painting. So then you think about what color would you do next? You could do this brown. And then we have this kind of weird shape in between, right? Maybe we take the gray or the brown. We already have the palette here. Now we're just playing with the colors. I'm going to take the gray. 
it's very watery so I'm going to kind of get rid of some of that. Now I'm going to repeat. And again, it's not going to be perfect. We're not looking for perfection. We're just creating some fun patterns. And I think you can do a diamond within a diamond. I think you guys are capable of doing that. Now you see that little dot has been created. If you don't want the dot, you just kind of push that paint back into the diamond. A little blob of watercolor paint. See, and it's gone. There's a lot of pushing and pulling on this paper. I find it very, I don't know, it's, it's easier to play with for the strokes too because it's a smooth surface so it's easier to maneuver your strokes. When you're using the cold press it takes a little longer. So we've got that. And then you got to think about where I'm going to put the other stuff, the other colors. You know, maybe I'll take the yellow, mustard yellow, and I'll go in here. And I'll go back and make another diamond shape. So it's like an oval that has a diamond in it. If you're just playing with geometric shapes at this point, you're not doing anything so special. And we're just taking a darker brown and you can do a circle in here. This is how I create patterns. I sit here and I will doodle this stuff all day long. It's a way to play with the color palette and pattern, shape, value, brush stroke. So you have to get that brown in there. Got enough of this burnt sienna everywhere, but we haven't got the green in there, have we? No. So we're going to add a little bit of this green. And I might go and do a skinny line in between these guys. Just a little pop. And because the burnt sienna is in the red family and the green, the cool family, and they're kind of opposites, they will pop even more. Skinny little line in between. Now some are a little darker than others. I'm going to have to lift up some of this paint and I can use it right over here. And I don't have a lot of space in between. I might actually end up painting over some of the burnt sienna and some of the gray. But it's fun just to play with this stuff. Right? We've got that yellow one in there. You could do another pass of the yellow if it's really light. Another layer of it. Some parts look a little too pale. So I'm just going to go back in here and fill it. Right? And then you think, well, what would I. You have the yellow, give me another brown in there. The brown would probably look really pretty. And maybe a darker brown, maybe not as light as the one before, so it really pops. This one's lighter, just try lighter. Do another triangle. Oh, excuse me, diamond. <laughs> just a nice deep dark brown in the center. And then you can think about more elements to add. This is where it gets really. So that's a simple basic design, right? Zoom in a little bit. Let's get more advanced. Let's add some patterns. So that's simple. Anybody can do that. When you start to get more advanced, take that paint's, uh, paint's gray, almost like black, dark. When it's dry, you can start to put little dots on the outer one you did. Oop, that one kind of bled a little bit. So now we're getting a little bit, a little more technical with our little doodle hair. You really want to make sure you can see the dots. Mine are a little bit small on this one. So I'll just go back over it. 
See, that just changed the whole look of it. I'm going to keep the one on the bottom so you can see the difference. Look at that. And same thing with the burnt sienna color, right? And this time I'll just do lines. Now this whole doodle is completely changed by adding a pattern to it. See? Simple little lines. I know you can see the difference between the top and the bottom. The simplicity and the intricacy of the top and the bottom. And all you're doing is changing the value of each element. So it's the same paint colors. Some are darker and some are lighter. Voila. You can get even more <laughs> intricate. You know, I might go back and add a little teeny dot in the center of this one. Again, simple little lines in the center of this brown. Take that brown. Do another skinny line outside of that. You just get more intricate with your pattern. This doodle then becomes something really fantastic. If you're into creating patterns and eventually would like to learn how to, you know, design some fabric, this is what you kind of do. You just create patterns and patterns of the colors and each this colors you use in a different way. So now we have that pattern. I'll show you how to difference the bottom. Kind of simple, more intricate, right? You can get more intricate again. Oh, I'm gonna mix up my yellow here. Again, I can do the little dashes on that yellow. It just makes it more unique. So simple shapes, changing up the value, creates a nice little funky, interesting pattern. Now, moving along, <laughs> let's try other things, more organic looking things like nature would pull out, which is leaves and stems. So now I've got the same brown, mix up some more because I've kind of gone through my brown. This is where this brush comes in and you just push down, pull back, get that skinny stem. Push down, pull back, crisscross over. You can turn your paper. Push down. Oops, I'm gonna fill that in a little bit darker. I felt like it was not dark enough. Just go right back over it. Kind of like a three prong kind of stem. You can make bigger leaves curve, curve, and then just go in here and fill it in and then pull the little stem. Now see how it's separated already and you can see the hard edges, but it's kind of pretty. That's what I love about this kind of paper. Do that little nice little curve again and then pull and you'll see I didn't do all, I didn't go back around it again. So we've got this kind of funky separation, but that's the beauty of this paper. Some people don't like that, which is fine. Do another stem, right? And then we're gonna get in some about other colors. So I might go back in and grab that paint's gray, a little bit darker, and make more of a stem right here. And little stems off of that, right? All these colors. And then I'll take my beautiful mustardy yellow and make little berries just round. We can take our nice burnt sienna color and just use that. Make like simple petals and leaves again. See that beads up like that? Just go ahead and move it around.
So I realized I got cut off when I didn't, sh the, the orange petal flower, I mean, leaf was shown, but the gray daisies were cut off. So basically just taking the brush and just pushing down and going around in a circle. I mean, I think you guys are pretty intelligent. <laughs> you can figure that out. That's all I did. You know, if you really want to see how it's beating up here, get technical, just take a little bit of paint and go this way. See, same shape as a leaf, but tinier, just going around in a circle. And then you have your little daisy, skinny, fat, however, however you like to make it. All right, so my phone was dying, but so I put that little color down. I added more leaves, just like these ones on the outside. I took that daisy with the grays, like I was showing you, added it here and those berries just put it here see you're spreading it all over your page so once you have this and it's dry you do another pass of it this is the layering technique just on top of that really pretty right you get that nice pretty layering do the same thing here you can add a third one, maybe a skinny one here. It's a lot of fun to layer these. Oops. Maybe have like a little one here. And then do the same thing with the brown. Kind of mix up some more brown. Once that's dry, you can go back over here and just add another leaf and attach it really pretty all these different things you could do for patterns they're like organic looking and not geometric simple simple sometimes the most simple things make the most beautiful things See how you just layer that? You can go back and layer this one. I really just like those layered leaves. They're really pretty and crisscross over here. So we put the different patterns going here. I might add a little yellow mustard center for my little gray daisies. So you pick a palette and you go into the patterns. Now, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I decided to finish off the bottom here. And let's have fun with the bottom bottom. You can make a, like a little tassel. So it's a circle, right? I love doing patterns. Um, I create a lot of them because I've created a lot of fabrics in my day. A little bit bigger. So I'm trying to make sure I get rid of all that paint that's beating up. So then you just take that circle and just try and just make little, make little lines, like little tassel lines. How dark and light you want to do it. It's all up to you. Right? This is the things that I think about. I can put another circle within a circle. All that good stuff. Go back up in here, add some more branches. You know what I didn't have up here? Was the green. It's like a little surprise element here. You don't have to put all the same colors in every single spot. But we could go up here and add the green. Could add a little green stem coming off this daisy because we have that green let's use it get that little surprise in there you can make little green leaves it's all about play color, all that good stuff. 
And, you know, try some hot press. See if you like it. I like it. It gets a bad rap, but I love it. Uh, there's a lot of illustrators that I love that use this paper. See, now they're just really kind of popped with that green, huh? So, showing you how to create palettes and playing with them. So you have, basically if you just did this by itself and that by itself, you have two coordinating prints. How they coordinate is the colors. There you go. <laughs> so I hope this tutorial was helpful, especially for people who like to do more illustration type of work or pattern work. This is how you start. This is where you go. I just realized that this particular needs his little fun pattern in here. I omitted that. Pattern within pattern, graphic shape, triangle squares, lines, all that good stuff. Play, I'm gonna do a little line kind of across here, separate them. It's all about play. Play, pattern, color. Play, pattern, color. There you go. Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let me know if you love patterns, you love this kind of tutorial. We can talk more in depth about making patterns. I can't help you with repeats. <laughs> I always had my companies do them for me. But I can give you ideas on how you can keep doing more coordinates. And so you can just have a whole nother coordinate. So you got these two, right? That's a print, that's a print. And then you can do a whole nother print that's just maybe just berries or leaves or stripes, but in the same colors. You see, that's how it goes. All right, take care and I'll speak to you soon.